a, a cap on that, what, how's that going to affect things? And the second thing is uh, the 777 Rebound, 777X, 777 Max. Uh, oh, it's going to be named. You know, please take some of that, uh, you know, plans for that. So, like, is this working? Uh, you can all hear it. Uh, in terms of financing, I mean, I think last year the industry financed uh, for the first time over a thousand airplanes. Deliveries between Boeing and Airbus, I think in total about $75 billion. I think as we look at this year with increasing rates, that's going to be somewhere between 95 and $100 million in terms of financing. I mean, there are changes in the marketplace, a couple of things. Um, number one, with Basel III and changes uh, in the European banking system and the struggles they're, they're going through, we think that financing from European banks this year will go down a bit. Uh, we do expect and uh, are confident that the Import-Export Bank uh, will continue to provide financing for aircraft through this year. Uh, uh, I think over the long term, what you'll see though in 2013, rates are going to go up in terms of that marketplace as well. So that means that probably airlines will be looking at other sources to finance aircraft. So we think the capital markets will become a more and more important role of financing uh, new delivery of aircraft. We also think that over time, leasing companies will become more important, a more important role because if rates at the import export banks go up as the European banks start to pull out a little bit, other regional banks uh, come in, rates go up, airlines are going to look for other ways to finance aircraft. Uh, like I said, capital markets, I think leasing companies do a big part of that. Okay, so the second question is, you know, what do we do next in terms of 777 and I'll include in that uh, 787. Uh, first of all, when you take a look at what we decided to do with the 737 MAX, by going with an airplane that is a new engine as opposed to an airplane that is all new, which was our original thought process, uh, we freed up resources to do other things. I will tell you, we've been going out and we've been pulsing the market because we understand at some point we have to replace uh, the 777 family. But frankly, we're just coming off a record year. The airplane has lots and lots of runway in front of it. Uh, when I think about it, what we're trying to do is we have a big design space of things we can look at doing the 777, anything from near-term improvements to major improvements of the airplane that might include you know, re-wing, re-engine the aircraft. Uh, but frankly, we have a lot of time in order to make that decision. Uh, we're watching the market, trying to understand what our customers want. We're trying to align the technologies that we'll need at the right time to make that happen. And frankly, we'll watch our competition and our competition, especially on the big end of their market, you know, they got some real problems. So we'll have to see all that plays out. Uh, the other thing we're looking at is uh, extending the 787 family stretching the 787 one more time, an airplane that we would call the 787-10 tax. Uh, that's an aircraft that would carry another 40 passengers, so it'd be around 320 passengers in a typical configuration. Uh, we would be looking uh, to put new technology in that airplane to extend the range, that's our first spot. So we have range that would fall off between say 6,800 and 7,000 miles. Uh, I would say that when we look at the 777, it's all about when will the technology be available, when will our customers need it, when will the market dictate that we, we, we uh, improve the airplane. I think on the 787, it's really more about production system of the aircraft we have and when that production system will be capable and ready, our customers will be ready for a day. Yes. Uh, Bernie Ball, Low Boundary Airlines. Uh, on the Max family, uh, you've already got the Sky Interior. Are you going to try to uh, give the window on the world of the 787? Are you going to look for an enlargement there if, if possible? Uh, that's a great question. The one thing that's beautiful about the 87, we have a structure that's built to part of fire, which allows us to build this really big window without adding significant weight to the aircraft in order to reinforce that window. If we were to do something like that on the 737, which is more conventional aircraft in terms of its aluminum uh, production, we could make a bigger window, but the cost in terms of weight of supporting that bigger window would be significant. So we've chosen not to do that. What we've done instead is we've gone with the window that we have today, which is significantly bigger than the window on our competition, and we've done some things with the window reveal providing more light uh, more spacious feel to our customers. You know, at the end of the day, 
Uh, when you think of the interior of what we've done on the 737 uh, Boeing Sky interior, we've really given this this space, this sense of spaciousness, this sense of light with the LED lighting that really makes passengers feel more comfortable.